This is Azer, a leading figure in the JavaScript world. Over the years, he has published over 350 packages on NPM. His code powers some of the biggest names in tech, Facebook, Google, Amazon, even core tools like React and Babel relied on the packages he built. But then, Azer found himself in a bitter clash with NPM. And what he's about to do will shake the entire internet. This story begins with a developer named Azer Cuchulo. He lived in California and had shared over 350 small code packages on NPM. He believed in creating simple tools that each did one job well. Even though many of his packages did not seem very active, they were used by many other tools in the JavaScript world. One day, Azer made a simple package named Kick, and he published that on NPM. Very soon, a company named Kick Interactive, which is the company behind the Kick messaging app, saw the Azer Kick package on NPM. They thought this was a problem, because Kick was their own trademark. At first, they asked Azer nicely to change the name, but their messages become more forceful over time. One message from the Kick's legal team said, We don't mean to be dicks about it, but it's a registered trademark, and if you release your project called Kick, our lawyers will come after you. Many developers thought that this was unfair and intimidating, especially toward one person working alone. However, when Kick Interactive contacted with NPM, which is the company that runs the NPM registry, NPM got stuck in the middle. The leaders Isaac Schluter and Lowry Voss had to deal with the legal issues from Kick, protect developer rights, and also keep the NPM systems running smoothly. They chose to remove the Kick package without the Iser's permission, even though they may have had legal reasons. But Iser felt hurt and betrayed. He thought NPM was no longer fair to developers like him. This situation also showed a bigger problem. Companies that run platforms like NPM have a lot of power over the individual developers and their code. So he took the decision and said, if NPM can take down one of my projects, then why not all of them? So he deleted all of his 350 packages all at once. At first, no one really cared that he destroyed all of his hard work. No one really cared that he felt hurt and betrayed. And NPM was so unfair to him. But within a few minutes, developers around the world started seeing strange errors. NPM could not find the left pad package. As a result, many apps and tools including major ones like Babel and React suddenly stopped working because they relied on those packages. Big tech companies like Facebook, PayPal, Netflix and Spotify were also hit. Their system broke when the left pad package was removed and their teams had to act quickly to fix things. This showed that even the biggest companies depends heavily on small open source tool made by individual developers. The developer community reacted quickly. Someone opened an issue on GitHub saying npmjs.org tell me that left pad is not available 404 page not found. More and more developers joined the thread reporting similar issues and tried to figure out what went wrong. The technical damage was huge. Projects that had worked fine for months or even years couldn't install their needed files. Many developers did not realize they were all facing the same problem because the error messages were confusing and unclear. So now the question is, what is left pad and why does it even matter so much? In Azure's 350 packages, there was a simple and tiny package called left pad, which was only 11 lines of JavaScript function. All it did was to just add extra characters to the left side of the word or sentence to make it a certain length. Here is the code which almost destroyed the entire internet. This function was used to help with formatting text. It made sure that all the words or numbers were the same length by adding spaces or other characters at the beginning. For example, it could change 42 into 00042 by adding zeros or turn hello into space, 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 and space, and then hello, by adding spaces to make it 10 characters long. The strange thing about left pad was that it was both very simple and used everywhere. Even though any good developers could write it in a few minutes, many people choose to use the already made version, because it was easy and already tested. This is common in the JavaScript coding where developers prefer not to write the same code again and again. 
and tools like npm make it simple to use small code packages for a specific tasks. Even though Leftpad did a simple job, it was deeply connected with many other projects. It wasn't just used in small apps, but also in big tools that were a part of even larger systems. For example, Babel, a tool that helps modern JavaScript work in all browsers, used other packages that needed Leftpad to work. So if the Leftpad disappears, many big projects would break. The way NPM worked at that time made the problem even worse. NPM did not keep the copies of packages on your computer, Instead, it downloaded them from the internet every time you install something. So when Leftpad was removed from the NPM website, any project that needed it suddenly stopped working. NPM teams led by CTO Was saw how serious this situation was. They had to make a tough choice. Should they respect the Azure right to delete his own code, or should they bring it back to protect the many developers who relied on it? NPM made a never-before-seen move by restoring the deleted Leftpad package themselves. They took a backup of the package and republished it without the original author permission. In the month before the package was taken down, Leftpad had been downloaded nearly 2.5 million times. This wasn't just developer downloading it by hand, it included automatic downloads by build tools, testing systems and other programs that needed to work properly. This fixed the problem quickly, but it also meant that NPM went against the Azure decision to remove something he had created. This action brought up a legal and ethical question about who really controls the code once it's shared online. NPM explained their decision by saying they choose what was best for the community. CTO was said they pick the needs of the many over the wishes of one author. This set a new rule. In very serious situation, the platform might step in to override the developer's choice to protect the larger community. But this also left people wondering, how do we know when it's okay to do that and who gets to decide? At the same time, the open source community reacted quickly. Developers began publishing the new version of Leftpad to replace the deleted one. For example, a person named Cameroon uploaded a version that worked the same way. This shows how fast the community can respond when something important breaks. However, because of how NPM handled version numbers, these new versions did not fix the problem for the projects that needed the exact original version. When the leftpad incident happened, NPM introduced a few new policies and changes. The biggest and most immediate change was the 24-hour rule. After the incident, NPM said developers could still delete or unpublish a package if it was less than 24 hours old. But if the package was older, they would need a help from the NPM support team, and it could only be removed if no other projects were dependent on it. This meant once a package became part of the NPM system, the developers could not just remove it when others were depending on it. Another important change was the idea of security placeholder packages. If someone removed a package completely, NPM would now automatically create a fake version with that same name to block anyone else from taking it. This stopped hackers from grabbing the deleted name and uploading dangerous code that others might download without knowing. NPM also made changes to how they handle trademark issues like the one which started the leftpad problem. They set up a new rule to make these disputes fairer, taking both the company's trademark and also a developer right into account. The goal was to avoid the future situation where a disagreement could turn into a major crisis. Over time, NPM kept improving its policies. By 2020, they allowed the removal of all little-use packages, those with fewer than 300 downloads per week and managed by only one developer. These updates showed that NPM was trying to find a better balance between giving developers freedom and keeping the ecosystem safe and stable.